Welcome to Worship with New Life United Methodist Church. We're glad to have you. This starting last week and now our coffee with the staff is in person on Thursdays at 10 o'clock. So you're all invited, but it's BYLC, bring your own coffee. So Thursdays at 10 o'clock right outside the sanctuary. Today we are celebrating World Communion Sunday. Christians all around the world are uniting together in communion to strengthen our united faith so that we would better show the world the love of Jesus Christ. Later in worship, we'll be um, receiving communion. So for those of you who are worshiping at home or online, I encourage you to pause the display and go find some bread or crackers and juice or water in your home and bring it back and have it close at hand as we will be receiving communion later. And those of us gathered in person, you should have received a, a cup and a, and a napkin. If you haven't, there are some on the table out there as well. We are here to worship. We have intentionally spent this time, wherever we're at, to worship to experience the resurrected Christ, the life-giving, living water of Christ. Glorious and liberating God, thank you for bringing us together on this Sabbath day to worship you. Fill this space with your grace that is sweeter than honey and revive our souls with your word that is more desired than gold. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. And everybody said, amen, <clears throat> amen. I'll be reading out of the book of Judges, beginning in chapter 16, verse 13. Kind of picking up the story of Samson, kind of mid to late story, <clears throat> if you're familiar with that story. Delilah then said to Samson, all this time you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, If you weave the seven braids of my head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with a pin, I become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids on his head, wove them into the fabric, and tightened it with a pin. Again she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are coming. They're upon you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric. Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, and because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God from my mother's womb, if my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines. Come back at once. He told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with their silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off his seven braids of hair and so began to subdue him, and his strength left him. Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. The word of God for the people of God. We come together to pray, to lift our prayers as one to the living God. So let us be in prayer. Lord, in the midst of our culture's 24-hour news cycles, we come to you. And we acknowledge in gratitude your love that never ends. 
we now silently lift up to you all the ways that you are blessing us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we silently lift up to you, Lord, a neighbor of ours that is in need of prayer. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for all the financial gifts given for today that you would use them and bind us to them to make your love real. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up to you the family of Michelle McCracken. Oh, Lord, she is the 53-year-old Carson City Crystal School staff member who died this week from COVID-19 just days after being diagnosed. We also pray for all the students and staff in that system, school system, who also have COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up to you, Lord, our President Donald Trump and his family and staff who have COVID-19. Pour your healing spirit into their lives for quick and full recovery to health. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, a lot of us are grieving. Actually, I think, Lord, all of us are grieving. We've lost friends, homes, lost incomes, lost health, lost connection to others. Help us also not to lose hope. We can lose a lot and still survive, Lord, but not hope. Lord, we are desperate for you. We have run out of emotional bandwidth. We need rest and self-care grounded in you, Lord. Lord, we are desperate for you. Give us eyes to recognize you at work in our lives, in our community, in the world. Give us the power to join you in your work to bring about the realities of your kingdom of justice and mercy and compassion and love. Lord, in your mercy. Now we pray together that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> I will now be reading from the book of Second Timothy. Chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 7. For the spirit a God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. The Spirit God gave us gives us power and love and self-discipline. <clears throat> Before
the scripture we've been coming back to during this series, the me I want to be, God's best version of me, is John chapter 7, verses 37, where, where Jesus said, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit. There is a me I want to be. God's best version of me. There is a me you want to be. God's best version of you. <clears throat> and that is living every moment of our life in the living water of God's Spirit. As we spend more and more time living in the flow of God's living water, the more we become aware that we become that God's best version of of ourselves, the more we experience love and joy and peace and fulfillment and abundant life, as Jesus says. Rivers of living water flow from within the deep part of our lives. Every part of who I am is satisfied to overflowing. That's the me I want to be, the me you want to be. So what keeps us out of that river of living water? <clears throat> One word, sin. A word that has gotten softened a little in our current society. There's some, some favorite desserts of mine have the word sin in them. There's triple sin chocolate cake and sweet sin truffles. Or there's sin city, Las Vegas. But what is sin? Sin is anything that that affects negatively our relationship with God. Anything that diminishes or reduces or obstructs our relationship with God, and that is sin. All the infinite ways we turn away from God. And, and since God's love is unconditional, sin comes down to it's us. It originates in you and I. Sin, anything diminishes our relationship with God or obstructs it from growing. Each per every person is created in the image of God. Sin, whenever we do or say or think anything that is not loving toward another person, that's sin. Because that offends God. That re affects our relationship negatively toward God because we are all created in God's image. God created all things. Sin is whenever we diminish or reduce or fracture our relationship with all of creation, because at its core, that breaks our relationship with God. Sin always takes us out of the flow of the river of living water, God's spirit. That's why it's important, vital for us to identify and understand sin because it threatens to pull us out of that life, God's best version of us. Only sin can be, keep us from becoming God's best version of us. All the other challenges in our life come from outside us. But sin works its way inside, strangling our soul. God created us in God's image and gave all of us free will, and God's desire and intent was that we would use that free will to choose to love, choose to flourish and live abundantly. That free will means we're not slaves to God. That freedom that God gave us for free will also goes hand in hand with our propensity to sin, to turn away from God. We have this knack for sin as humans, as part of who we are. But the good news of Jesus Christ is that after Jesus died and was resurrected and ascended to heaven, he gave us this living water, the Holy Spirit, to live in us. That spirit, that living water lives in us. 
And that scripture we read out of Second Timothy says that the spirit God gave us gives us power and love and self-discipline. Power and love and self-discipline. Power to see where sin leads away from God, out of the river. Power to choose the spirit over sin and love that overcomes all sin. In fact, apart from the flow of the Holy Spirit living in us, we cannot see our sin. We are sitting exactly in our own blind spot. Without the Holy Spirit, there is this me that I cannot see, and that's the sinning me. But the good news is the Spirit is already at work in us. Our job is simply to listen and respond. The Spirit is always working in us. Our job is to listen and respond. <clears throat> John Ortberg, in his book, The Me I Want to Be, tells this story, true story. <clears throat> He and his wife were asleep one night and a tremendously loud beeping sound came blaring from the hallway. And John's wife, Nancy, poked him in the ribs and says, what's that sound? And John, knowing that if he acknowledged that sound, he'd have to get up and check on it, said, what sound? Of course, <clears throat> after some tense discussion, he got out of bed and checked on the sound. When he came back to bed, the conversation went something like this. Nancy says, what was the sound? John said, it was a smoke alarm. Nancy said, what made it stop? John said, I took the batteries out. Nancy said, you can't do that. There could be a fire. John said, no, no, no. Do you smell smoke? Do you feel heat? No, I didn't smell any smoke. I didn't see any fire. It was a battery issue. Go back to sleep. And they went back to sleep. The next morning, John had an early morning breakfast meeting at a restaurant, so he got up real early, but he noticed a couple oddities. There were some odd malfunctions. The hall light at the bottom of the stairways didn't seem to work right, and his garage door wouldn't open, the electric one, so he had to lift it up manually. But he'd had some problems with it, so he went off to the restaurant. Well, after it, he was at the restaurant an hour, the server came to him and said, Are you John Orberg? He said, yes, I am. And the server said, your wife called and said, you need to get home immediately. The house is on fire. When he got home, one end of the house was in flames. There were fire trucks and emergency vehicles. What had happened is a delinquent bird had built its bird nest in the chimney. And the furnace had come on and it started smoldering and set off the smoke alarm. And batteries were removed from the alarm. And three hours later, the flames were consuming one end of the house. Here's how John just ends the story. <clears> he <throat> said, there was unbelievable damage, all from one stupid little bird. What kind of idiot would take the batteries out of a smoke alarm so they could sleep better? He said, that idiot was me. The smoke detector was not my enemy, the fire was. The smoke detector was simply trying to help me live. I have a life. It's my house. You have a life. It's your house. I have a soul, and you do too. Do you hear any beeping sounds in your soul? Beeping sounds can sound like this. An angry man blows up at those closest to him. The beeping sound was his loneliness. He takes the batteries out by drinking a little more and convincing himself that his, that his relatives were really difficult people. The Holy Spirit brings conviction. And our best response to that conviction is not to suppress it. Not to take the batteries out, but get out of bed and check and see what that alarm is going off. What sin is there before it does any more damage? If I want to walk down the road out, getting me, myself out of the river of living water, I must begin by silencing the sound of the Holy Spirit. 
when we silence the Holy Spirit, that beeping sound, <clears throat> long enough and over time, we can become like, metaphorically like Samson, who did not know the Lord had left him. In other words, we can lose all sensitivity to the Lord's voice, God's divine presence within us. The, the Lord <clears throat> will not leave us, but we may not be able to recognize the Lord's voice. Don't get used to ignoring that beeping sound in your soul. But the good news is the spirit God gave us gives us power and love and self-discipline. God's spirit is always available. It's always flowing, always wooing us, no matter how much we've ignored that sound. No matter how insensitive we have become, the Holy Spirit's always there, wooing us back. God's Spirit will enable us to find the truth, no matter how lost we may seem to be, if we are patient and open and willing. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to jump back into that river of living water. <clears throat> when we come face to face with that sin, when we recognize that beeping of our soul, the Holy Spirit, and we investigate and we find that sin, there often are concrete steps we may have to take to reconcile the damage done. We may have to seek forgiveness from a friend, apologize to a co-worker, somehow make things right. Our response to the beeping sound of the Holy Spirit in our soul is repentance. Repentance. Turning toward God, expressing regret and remorse for our sin. Turning toward God and expressing regret and remorse for our sin. That's repentance. Repentance, repenting is a gift from God for us, not for God. Repenting does not increase God's desire to be with us. That's always unlimited. It increases our availability to be with God, our capacity to be with God. Repenting is always in this grace-filled promise of forgiveness, the grace-filled promise of forgiveness. Training ourselves by the power of the Holy Spirit to hear the beeping sound in our soul, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit when there is sin there, and to act on that beeping sound, to investigate, and then to repent and receive forgiveness, getting us back in the river. It's God's gift to us, repentance. It's life. It's the life that Christ offers us. It's what we really, really, really ache for deep down, this life overflowing with living water. Jesus says that love and that water and that spirit and that life is available all the time through him. All the time through him. Today we have this privilege and honor and joy of celebrating the sacrament of communion where these simple gifts of God, bread and juice, become inner and spiritual transformation food in which we receive the very living water of life, Christ's presence. So as we prepare for communion, let us be in prayer. So let us be in prayer. I invite each of us to silently speak to God about how we are ignoring that beeping sound of the Holy Spirit. How we're good at taking the batteries out. Perhaps how we've even gotten numb to that voice of the Holy Spirit.
Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. <clears throat> we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ died for our sins while we were yet sinners. That demonstrates God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. We are thankful for God's faithfulness. For God's love. When our love fails, God's love never fails. The God you came to us in Jesus, fully human and fully divine, to demonstrate your love through your birth and life and death and resurrection and ascension, <clears throat> you freed us from sin and death. On the night when you betrayed us, you gathered your friends together like we are gathered here today. You took the bread and you gave thanks to your Father in heaven and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You took the cup at the end of the meal and said, that gave thanks to your Father and said, Take, drink this. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we remember these mighty acts in Christ and offer ourselves as Christ offered himself. Pour your Spirit, your Holy Spirit, on us and these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us your body and blood so that we would be your body redeemed by your blood for all the world. Make us one with you, Christ, one with each other in ministry to all the world. All glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now we start with the bread for those of you <clears throat> who are here in place. I invite you to take the first layer off if you haven't already done so. And if you have, that's fine too. For those at home, pick up that piece of bread or cracker, and for us, those of us here, we hold that bread. And sometimes they're a little tricky to get apart, I understand. The body of Christ, broken for you. You may eat your bread. I invite you to, those of you who are gathered here, to take off the last section of lid that becomes your cup with juice in it. If you're home, to grab your juice or water that you had laying available. Again, sometimes they're a little tricky. I understand. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. May you drink. Let us be in a prayerful attitude as we sit in God's river of grace.
Lord, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. This means of grace which you have poured out your river of living water into us. Send us out by the power of your spirit, by the power of your living water that is in us to be your witnesses to your love and your mercy and your compassion and your justice. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Go forth today and this week knowing that that river of living water is always flowing within you, calling you back, speaking to you, beeping to you at times, inviting you back into that river. And may you pay attention. May you find your way through repentance back into that river of living water. Amen and amen. <laughs>